Making your own nail cleanser adds lots of benefits to your services. I'm gonna show you everything about nail cleanser today and how to make your own. here from the nail hub and I hope my last video of Q&A was helpful for you guys I still have this stupid voice from my cold but it is gradually going away today I wanted to talk about nail cleansers because this is a really really important part of working with gels um, and there's two main products that we work with with gel one is acetone and one is alcohol so I wanted to talk about how you can make your own nail cleanser and also some of the benefits of doing so and what you should look for if you are buying branded nail cleanser. Okay, so <clears throat> typically one of the biggest things that a lot of people uh, don't think about, and I actually got asked this on one of my previous videos, so I'm gonna bring it up. Um, you cannot put acetone in just any container. Um, if you put acetone in a regular plastic container that is not rated to contain acetone, the acetone will actually eat the jar and eventually it'll start to leak out. This also applies to monomer. If you are getting into acrylic or you're wanting to practice with acrylic, monomer also has to be in a very specific type of container. Um, so don't just buy any pump and put some monomer or acetone in it. It will actually eat the plastic. Um, so typically if you buy a nail product pump um, like menda even makes them um, or there's lots of different styles um, i have some like little baby ones like these um, i also have my ones that i decked out with crystals um, these ones are actually glass so glass is a great thing to put in um, any of your, your solvents like acetone or rubbing alcohol or uh, monomer glass, you can absolutely put it in there. But the problem with glass, especially in a salon setting, is that it's prone to breaking. So if you drop this, it's going to, you know, it's going to go bye bye. Um, so plastic is also a great option. And I do like pumps that lock. So they usually twist and lock so that you can't push up and down on it, especially if you're going to travel with them. So um, just keep that in mind. The container does matter. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is that there is an easy way to test if your current cleanser is going to cause a problem for you. As you remember in my base coat video, I talked a little bit about adhesion and how anything that's sitting on top of the nail plate between the nail plate and our gel could cause some problems with adhesion. And nail cleanser is one of those. Nail cleanser, especially if you're mixing and matching different things, um, it's less of an issue if you're sticking with one system. So you can absolutely use the cleanser that goes with your system. And if you're a very loyal nail tech and you're only using one brand of product, stick with your nail cleanser, that's a great thing. But if you're like me and you like to use lots of different things, rather than using branded cleansers from every brand that I use, I like to make my own. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that nail cleanser, like I said, some of them, they, they leave a residue on the nail and it can actually impede my products from properly attaching to the nail plate. Or it can also have a chemical adverse reaction with my products, which means it like um, makes my gel polish pull back from the free edge. If you've ever been like painting on your gel polish and you're like, what the heck? Why does it keep moving? Why does it keep pulling away? A lot of times it's because of the cleanser that you use to cleanse the nails. Um, cuticle remover can also do this, but nine times out of 10, when I ask people, hey, what nail cleanser are you using and what gel are you using? I find that they're incompatible with one another. So how do we test this? All right, good question. So I wanna show you a quick test and I wanna give credit to Jim McConnell from Light Elegance for this because Jim is awesome and he is the, the guy who formulated Light Elegance and, um, and he is a very, very smart chemist as well as a nail guy. So anyway, I wanted to show you his little mirror test. Um, on this mirror, and it's kinda of hard to see, let me see if, okay, there we go. Um, I have little dots, so here's one little dot. I've got one here, and then one here, and then I've got one here. Okay, so I've got four on a mirror. A mirror is the best way to do this because you can see the reflection. So on here, I've got some branded nail cleansers that have scent and color, and over here, I have a mixture of just 
acetone and alcohol. And <clears throat> what I wanted to show you on this is if I take my finger even, and let's just do this big one first, let me get the reflection here. Okay, so if I take my finger and I swipe through that dried blob, you'll see that it has a little bit of residue to it. It doesn't feel sticky on my finger, and if I take a clean wipe and I wipe it off, because again, you can have oils on your fingers as well, but if I take this and I clean the mirror, you can see it's kind of smudgy, right? And I know it's hard to see because of the reflection, but a mirror is the best thing to do this with. So it's kind of smudgy on here, not bad, um, but it does have a smell and it's, it's relatively clean. This one I think is gonna be one of the worst ones. So I'm gonna put my finger through that. Holy moly, it's like grease and I can feel it on my finger too. It just feels so greasy. And if I wipe it with a dry wipe, it gets even worse. So can you see that residue? And this is a nail cleanser from an actual company. I'm, I don't want to call out companies because that's not what I'm here to do, but you can absolutely test your own nail cleanser by doing this on a mirror, put a droplet on, let it dry, and then try wiping it off and see what happens to it. But this is a nail cleanser, and you can see it's just an absolute greasy, oily mess. So if that was on my nail plate before I put gel on it, you can absolutely start to see how that would affect the adhesion of my products because now I have that greasy layer of stuff sitting on top of the nail and I'm gonna try and put gel on top of it and the gel isn't gonna be able to attach to the nail plate. All right, so that was number two. Let's try this teeny little dot I have over here. This one actually doesn't feel greasy, but it feels kind of silky, like almost like it's um, like facial primer or something. So again, I'll use like a little dry spot on it. Oh, okay, so you can see. So the first one was here, and you can see it's actually gone away. It's not greasy at all. But over here, you can see this one is really greasy, and so is this one. If you can see those two, holy moly. And those are actual nail cleansers from a gel company. A lot of times, a lot of times with nail cleansers, they're not only made for cleansing the nail plate, but they're also made for removing the inhibition layer at the end. So some companies opt to put some scent and also some natural oils or some color in it, and that way it kind of moisturizes the skin around the nail plate while you're cleansing the finger. But again, having this type of residue inside of your nail cleansers is gonna cause a lot of problems, not only the adhesion issue, but it can also adversely interact with other products that you're using, especially if you're using one base and a different color and a different top coat, you're gonna run into the issue when you're using these types of cleansers. It can really cause a lot of problems. Okay, last but not least, let's try, let me get a new wipe here. Let's try just the acetone alcohol mix. So it is not oily at all. And if I take my dry wipe and I rub it, it makes my mirror clean. So you can see it makes a huge difference not having any residue on the mirror and having residue on the mirror. Imagine this is the nail plate, nice and clean nail plate, squeaky clean even, and this is like literally my finger. But nice and squeaky clean, and even if I take that same cleanser that I used, which is the acetone alcohol mix, and I clean the mirror, it should make it nice and squeaky clean once it dries. So it does, it really just cleans that up and it probably will even clean my oily, greasy cleansers that I have over here and clean all of that off, okay? So very important to notice that it does make a difference what cleanser you use and what it includes. Now my mirror is nice and clean again um, and it's squeaky clean except for my oily, lotiony fingers. So this is something really important to take note of is that not all cleansers are made the same and the color and scent might be enticing because oh it smells so lovely but those cleansers with scent and color are going to cause you some problems. Now it doesn't apply to everything especially if you're using you know the line of products that come with that cleanser then yeah if it's causing problems contact the manufacturer and say hey your cleanser is causing problems and they're going to back you up because they're going to go oh you're using our cleanser and our products and our lamp great, we're gonna back you up. But if you're a dabbler, you're a mixer matcher, I just recommend using regular isopropyl alcohol and acetone. Okay, so how do we mix our own cleanser? All right, I'm gonna show you guys a formula. So you're gonna take 
any type of acetone proof pump or container, whatever you want. Glass is great, plastic's also wonderful. Um, you can get them from anywhere, and I'll list the ones that I have here um, on my channel down below just in case you guys want to check that out. Uh, but you're gonna take your pump and you're going to fill it probably about 75% or 80% of the way with isopropyl alcohol. And it's very important that you use 90% or better isopropyl alcohol because anything more than that means or anything less than that, sorry, it means it's gonna have more water. So when you see something that says 70% isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol, it means that 70% of it is alcohol and the other 30% of it is water. So 90% means 90% of it is alcohol and 10% of it is water, and that's why we want less water. If you have 99% alcohol, that's great, but 99% tends to be much more expensive, so if you wanna save a little bit, get yourself some 90% and then the acetone is gonna do the trick on getting that water to evaporate. So fill your pump up about 75, 80% of the way with your isopropyl alcohol, just plain old isopropyl alcohol. You can get it pretty much anywhere. I actually get mine online by the gallon because I work in a salon setting. Um, and I'll list on, on here uh, where I get it from and actual medical supplies veterinary supplies, stuff like that are great places to buy alcohol from. Um, and then you're going, to, um, you're going to fill up the rest of the container with just plain acetone. And when I say acetone, I don't mean nail polish remover, I mean real acetone, okay? Um, and I prefer acetone that comes in a plastic bottle. Don't get the kind from the hardware store that's in a metal can because it usually has a lot of particles in it um, and a lot of just contaminants. So I like to get um, professional acetone in like a gallon jug and I use these to mix my own cleanser. All right guys, so I hope that helps. I know that this is gonna make a huge difference for those of you that you feel like you're doing everything right, you feel like everything's curing but stuff is still coming off and chipping. Cleanser can play a huge role, especially if your nail services aren't lasting as long as you think they should. Try swapping out your cleanser for plain old mix and see how that affects your services because I know it made a huge difference for me once I got rid of all of my scented and colored nail cleansers, okay? Hope this helps. I'll be in touch next week with another video. And as always, please feel free to ask questions down below. I've got all the links for you down below as well. And uh, if you haven't started from the beginning of our Nail Fundamentals playlist here on the Nail Hub YouTube channel, I highly recommend you go back to the beginning because all of these lessons are, um, they build on each other. And I really wanna make sure that you have the knowledge going forward as we move into more advanced topics, okay? Talk to you guys later, bye.